just just a just a word of uh, counsel. Let this be a great day. Let this be a day of telling good stories. All right. Uh, I know it could be a sad day, but it don't have to be a sad day. Tell tell good stories. Something funny. I remember Mama this, and I remember Mama this. I'm just tell you right now, if Miss Jenny was here this morning, she would already got the mic from me. By the time I come up here, she just stuck her little finger and come on, started walking on up here, because this was her day to get the mic. Say me somebody. the Holy Spirit comfort you today praise God and celebrate your mama amen whether she's here or she's gone celebrate your mama tell some good stories some funny stories some things that she taught you that's that's how you uh, that's how you make it through these periods Hallelujah. Anyway, we want to welcome all of our online visitors to the service today. And we trust that at the end of this message today, as we continue to talk about the Holy Spirit, that you will be impacted and empowered. Father, we thank you for this opportunity again to speak the Word of God to this, your people. We thank you for the mighty Holy Spirit you sent to indwell us to be our teacher and to be our guide. Uh, we trust the Holy Spirit to live big in us, to think through our minds, speak through our lips, unveil, reveal, unfold the Word of God unto our inner man. And we pray for all of us who are here this morning, those who are watching us online, uh, we will not just be hearers of the Word only, but be doers of the Word. And for this, we give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor, and everyone said, Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, put your hands together and give the Lord a hand clap of praise one more time. Amen. I called my, my, my mama that raised me in Perry yesterday because I didn't want to forget the day. I knew I had to be here. And so I just called her yesterday. And uh, if you got one that's living, call them. Say what you need to say while you got a chance to say it. Because you can't say it to them. Well, you can, but they gone if they leave. So make sure you say it while you got a chance. Is that right? All right. St. John chapter 14, verse 26 is our text for this series of messages about introducing us to the person of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we talked to God... Uh, I was thinking about it yesterday at a, at a homegoing service. You know, people, I believe in God, and they kind of, God is like uh, generic uh, to them, you know. Because, see, you know, you got to understand that if you just say, I believe in God, now you could be Muslim, and that would still be accurate. Because they believe in Allah. And, uh, you know, all of these different uh, religious bodies uh, believe in some higher power. power. And, and so uh, that's why me and AA and NA could never get along because they want to talk about the higher power. And I'm like, I need you to tell me who he is. Because I know who he is. Uh, there's only one person that ever died and came back to tell us about it, and that's Jesus. Say amen, somebody. So Jesus was getting ready to go after he had risen from the dead and uh, was getting ready to go back to heaven, and he told his disciples, he said, now I'm going away, but uh, before I go, I'm going to tell you, I'm going I'm to have the Father send another comforter to basically be with you forever. 
And uh, this is what it's talking about here in John 14, 26. Jesus said, but the comforter, and he tells you who he is, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, in the name of Jesus, he, person, will teach you how many things? How many things? He's the teacher, y'all. The Holy Spirit is the teacher. And so when you talk to him, ask him to teach you. He will teach you all things and bring all things that he's taught you. Because that's in that same sentence. He will bring all things back to your remembrance, whatever he said to you. How many of y'all ever been in a situation and all of a sudden a scripture would come to you in that situation? See, that's the Lord reminding you of what he taught you. And to, to say it in a way that you uh, can better understand it, there are bullets in your gun. If you don't have any bullets in your gun, huh? You shoot, but ain't gonna, and nothing going to come out. So you need the word of God in you. Is that right? You need the word of God in you so that you can fight whatever you need to fight when you need to fight it. All right? Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, I told you last week that uh, the Holy Spirit enabled the scriptures to be written. You know, people say man wrote the Bible. Well, that's only half true. Man wrote it, but he was inspired by the Holy Spirit to write it. The Holy Spirit is God just as much as Jesus and just as much as the Father is. Amen. They're all one. He's referred to as a person. He teaches you. He reminds you. He guides you. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Say amen, somebody. And he speaks. I want to show you some things. Uh. Look at uh, Acts 13 and 2. I'm going to skip over some scriptures here. I know that's going to make it a little difficult for the people on the, in the sound boat. But uh, Acts 13 and 2, where it says he speaks. And the scripture says, and they minist as they ministered to the Lord. In other words, as the, the saints were worshiping like we were this morning and fasted. The Holy Ghost said. So what was the atmosphere necessary to get the Holy Spirit to speak? Worship. See, to minister to the Lord, that's what that means. It means to worship the Lord. So you could say, as they worshiped and, and fasted, the Holy Ghost said. Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when he was come to us, Acts 21 and 11, he took Paul's girdle and bound his own hands and feet and said, Thus saith the Holy Ghost. Thus saith the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit speaks. Acts 28 25. And when they agreed not, uh, among themselves, they departed after that Paul had spoken one word. Well spake the Holy Ghost. Well spake the Holy Ghost by Isaiah the prophet unto our fathers, saying... Holy Spirit speaks. Say out loud, say, speak to me, Holy Spirit. Now, when you say, speak to me, don't necessarily, you know, I, I'm, I've been walking with the Lord for almost 50 years now, and I've never heard an audible voice like you're hearing me. Now, it doesn't mean he won't speak in an audible voice because the scriptures, it shows us, uh, but primarily, he speaks to us in our inner man, and we have these uh, messages that are sent to our inner man and then sent to our intellect or our minds, okay? And the way you discern what you're listening to is by, you, the, again, the Scripture. You've got to have enough Scripture to, to recognize the voice. For instance, if I called Miss Kirby on the phone, she would know who I was, even though I didn't say this is a pastor. And I definitely wouldn't know who she was. If she called me on the phone, she wouldn't have to identify her and say, I could recognize the voice. 
because I've listened to the voice enough to recognize it without seeing hers. Does that make sense? It's the same way with listening to God. A lot of people say, I don't, I, you know, the Lord doesn't speak to me. Yeah, he does. You're just not listening. You're not recognizing. You know, the old folks would say, something told me not to go there. Well, that something was a somebody. Right? Have you ever had an argument with somebody and, and then something told you you need to apologize? Well, see, that something was a somebody. Because let me just tell you, the devil don't tell you to apologize. He's never told me to apologize to one person. My whole life, he's never told me to apologize. So if you hear this message on the inside this, that comes in, you, you, that in your inner being and you, in the thought comes you need to apologize, that's him talking to you. See, we make, we make God spooky. Like the Twilight Zone. He's not spooky. He lives in you. And he's talking to you. You ever had this thought in church? Uh, I need to sow this much money today. And it was a, more than you normally would give, so you just, I, in the, I rebuke that in Jesus' name. Well, see, what you did was you just rebuked the Holy Spirit. He was speaking to you. The devil ain't going to never tell you to give a large amount of money to church. He going to tell you about the mother 10. You got to do this. You got to do this. You, gotta, you can't do this. You can't do this. That's him talking. You ever been in church and you have this thought that uh, somebody needs a, a hug today? And you, and you knew who the person was. And you came to church, and you listened to me, and you left church, and you never gave that person that hug. You ain't got to, you have to raise your hand. Just look at me. That way nobody knows I'm talking to you. <laughs> See, I'm convinced, this is what I'm convinced of, that when you come to church, it's not just about uh, receiving it's about receiving and giving. And the Holy Spirit is in each one of you that are born again. And he speaks to you. And part of your worship experience is sharing the goodness of the Lord with other people. See, worship is, is kind of like sunshine and rain to plants. You can have plants that are kind of withered. But you give them enough water and enough sunlight, and they will. That's why mama would always put the plants that's trying to struggle, put them in the windowsill. Y'all remember those days? My mama would take a look. She would, do, uh, my mama and Perry, the one that's still with me, uh, she would take a little, uh, it didn't even look like a, just a piece of plant. And she would set that joker in a glass. And put it in the window until some roots came out of it. Then she'll take that plant and put it in a little bitty pot. Put some good, you know, dirt in there. Until it grew a little further. Then she'll take it. Am I telling the truth? When you come to church... If, and we share with one another, it's like receiving sunlight. And I know since the pandemic, people have been scared to touch and all that. But you, you know, you can still share a, a, a comforting word and, and say, you know, I really appreciate you. Say amen, somebody. So before you leave this morning, that's your assignment. Say amen, somebody. Now, Ricky, I forgot about you singing, but I'm not going to, don't, don't let me leave. Remind me. I'm sorry. I apologize to that. See, the Holy Spirit just reminded me.
Well, hallelujah. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Everybody say the Holy Spirit speaks. All right. Where, where did I stop at? I forgot where I stopped at. Okay, let's go to 28. No, I had already said that. Okay, 1 Timothy 4 and 1. But the Spirit speaks or speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. The Holy Spirit speaks expressly. The Holy Spirit speaks. Say amen, somebody. Hebrews 3, 7, and 8. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, today if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. You know, as the Holy Spirit spoke to you, the reason you got born again. He was the one that prompted you to give up. He was the one that said, okay, it's time for you. Say amen, somebody. The Holy Spirit will speak to you when you're doing crazy. Ask me how I know. <laughs> you, you can be going in the opposite direction of the way you know you should be going, and he'll be talking to you the whole while. What you doing here? It happened to me. What you doing here? Get, get yourself out of here. Now, let me help y'all. I believe the Holy Spirit will speak to you in a language that you can understand. And so sometimes he even sounds like your mama. Sometimes he sounds... He comes to you in the voice that you, that you recognize, that you understand as the voice of authority in your life. So he talks to me, like, what you doing here? The Holy Spirit doesn't speak to you like, Charles Thomas. Why art thou here? Anyway, he speaks to you. He said, D, what you doing? That's the way he speaks to you. He speaks to you in a voice that you remember as a voice of authority in your life, who, who, whomever that may be. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Ro Revelations 2, 7, in he that hath an ear, let him what? Yeah. What the Spirit says. So now see, he ain't talking about these right here. Because you know you can hear with these and still not hear. It's kind of like you, you know, your mama told you to do something. And so she had to speak to you in another language. Any of y'all have mamas like that? She said, well, okay, you don't understand that. Maybe you understand this. And by the time she gets through talking, you said, I <laughs> Selective hearing. I know kids have selective hearing. Oh, yeah, they, they really got it because you can, you, can, you can say, clean up your room, they didn't hear it. They just too busy playing TikTok on the phone, you know. But if you said we're going to Six Flags in, in about 20 minutes, them same ears. And we tell the truth. And we do the Holy Spirit the same way because he'll speak to us 
you know, we thinking crazy, go, doing crazy, and he will speak to us, and we'll act like we didn't hear him. But now if he said we're going to get a check. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I know the Lord just spoke to me. See, it's, it's almost like, <laughs> y'all have heard me tell this story, but the, it's, it's a story of another sto- a person who was trying to hear from God, so he opened up his Bible and closed his eyes. And he said, wherever I stick my finger at, that's you talking to me, Lord. And Judas hung himself. Oh, no, that ain't it. <laughs> closed his eyes again. And that which you're going to do, do quickly. So you, you, you go hang yourself quickly. <laughs> now y'all laughing, but how many times have you opened up the Bible and say, Lord, speak to me. And he put something out there that you didn't particularly care to digest that day. Like move away from this and do this and apologize. and uh, uh, Huh? And you just switch the scripture like, no, that ain't for me today. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Revelation 14, 13, And I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord, and henceforth saith the Spirit that they will rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Revelation 22 and 17, And the Spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him that heareth say, come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. I'm going to share something with you that uh, I kind of skipped over, but I'm just. The Holy Spirit is pleasured by worship and by singing. I want to read this scripture from, you from the book of Zephaniah. Zephaniah 3, 17, it says, The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save, he will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. Listen to this last little phrase here. He will joy over thee with singing. Now, we know Psalm 100 and uh, I think it's 2 says, Come before, serve the Lord with gladness, right? Come before his presence with what? So that's us coming to him. But that verse right there in Zephaniah, the direction has changed. He, talking about the God that's in the midst of thee, that's mighty, will joy over thee with singing. So we're, while we're in here singing to him, he's singing to us. He's singing over us. What in the world could he be singing over us? Whatever his word says about you, you're accepted in the beloved. You're justified by faith. Hallelujah. You have peace with God. Oh, whatever the word says about you, you're the apple of his eye. He loves you. Say amen, somebody. Oh, hallelujah. Let's go to John 15, 26. John 15, 26. And when the comforter is come, whom I will send you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he will do what? He shall what? Of me. In other words, the Holy Spirit witnesses. And that's what we're to do. When we go places, when we talk, we're supposed to talk about him. I'm not supposed to talk about me. I'm supposed to talk about him. Hallelujah. He's testifying. The Holy Spirit's testifying of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, here's another one. And, I, and this is, I, I kind of, I, I didn't want to bring this out, but it's necessary. Look at Isaiah 63 and 10. But they rebelled against him 
and grieved what? Ooh. So he became their enemy and fought against them. They rebelled against him and grieved. So, so when he tells us to do things, or he tells us not to do things, and we do the opposite, that's called rebellion, disobedience. Our disobedience grieves him. Now, somebody helped me with this one time, and I hope to help you with this. Is God all-knowing? Does he know the beginning and the end? Okay. Now, if you disappoint me, it's because you did something or said something that I didn't expect you to say or do. Is that right? So you can't really disappoint God. Are you with me? You know why you can't disappoint him? Because he already knows. He already knew you was going to do crazy. He already knew you was going to act out. So it, there's nothing that you and I have done or said in our life that made God like, I can't believe. They said that. I, we were building this building uh, for the sake of people that have not heard this story. This wall right here that goes in the hallway, I noticed was too small. It just looked real narrow. And so I said to the contractor and the, the architect, I said, this wall is too small. And they said, oh, no, it's not too small. I said, I don't know anything about building like y'all do, but I promise you. This hallway's too small. So they measured it. And they said, sure enough, it was too small. So in my natural mind, I started saying, oh, my God, how much money is this going to cost me? And we were out there in the parking lot, and, 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 and they said to me, said, Pastor, said, it's not going to cost you anything. I said, why is that? They said, because we factor in mistakes before we ever start the project. Now, that's what the natural man said to me, but I heard the Holy Ghost say to me. Right there in that parking lot, said, Chuck, guess what? I factored all yours in, too. I knew about what you was going to say and do. Because I know the end from the beginning. You didn't disappoint me because I knew you was going there. But it grieves me. Why does it grieve God? Because he knows what you're going to have to go through because of the choice you made. He knows what you don't know about the consequences that comes with your choice. So you, you get to choose the sin, but you don't get to choose the consequence. But he knows what the consequence is based on the choice that you make. And it grieves him because as a natural parent, how many of y'all see your children going through things and you as a parent want to fix it? I know I'm talking to somebody in here now, especially mamas. Huh? You, want, you don't want your daughter, you don't want your son to go through this, and yet you can't stop it. Well, the difference between you and, and God is God can't stop it, but he won't. Because if you don't have any consequences, on King Street over there where I live, they used to take them little hot rods and be flying up that little street. You know, we got kids and everything over there. They flying, I mean, just, boom, you know, that's like the track over there. Well, somebody, it wasn't me, but somebody called somebody. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. It really wasn't me. 
But the next time I went on my walk, it's because it's part of my walking trail, there's about two big speed bumpers. What's the purpose of a speed bumper? And if you don't slow down, it will tear the bottom of your car up. Right? See, the Holy Spirit's got speed bumpers. And he put them out there so you'll slow your road. And if you don't, you're going to get hurt. Ephesians 4.30 says, Grieve not the Holy Spirit. That's, uh, that's uh, uh, like I said, I didn't really want to talk about that too much because it's kind of a down thing, but you need to be concerned about grieving the Holy Spirit. I am. In fact, that's, I'm, I'm most concerned about because I, I just got through. I'm reading this book. I'm, I'm just about through with about Catherine Coleman. Y'all don't know anything about her uh, lady preacher from back in the 70s, 60s and 70s. And... Uh, she had this wonderful relationship with the Holy Spirit, and I'm, I, because I, I, I want a re- wonderful relationship with the Holy Spirit, I read their book, and so she was really concerned about grieving. So she wouldn't allow in her services a whole lot of unnecessary emotionalism. She felt like when the Holy Spirit is moving, Don't get in the way. In fact, she, she, she would, if you ever watch any film of her, you can go on YouTube and watch her. She would say, Holy Spirit. She would, she would speak real soft, but signs and wonders doing. She didn't lay hands on nobody. She just talking and the Holy Spirit's opening blinded eyes, opening deaf ears, crippled walking. And they couldn't come up on stage with her until they knew they had a miracle. Because what she said, what what happened to you? And they would come up and do that. Hallelujah. How how many of y'all want to see the Holy Spirit move? So I don't want to do anything that's going to make him. I was sitting somewhere yesterday. And a couple of people was yang yang and back. I call it backbiting. Talking about church folk. And I was uncomfortable even in the room. I, I, I want, I don't need to be hearing this. Say me somebody. You, it, it agreed me. I can imagine the Holy Spirit in some of our circles. And he comes around and he says, no, I don't think I want to be a part of that. Am I making any sense today? Romans 15, 13 says, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the Lord, for the Lord Jesus Christ, for the love of the Spirit that you... For the love of the Spirit, for the love of the Spirit that you strive together with me in your prayers for, to God for me. The Holy Spirit, because he's God, he loves. He is love. Say so amen, somebody. Say, the Lord loves me. In spite of me. Now, see, that's the truth. You can't change that truth. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 2, 10 through 12, but God hath revealed them to he, us by his spirit. That comes right after that verse that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither is it entered into the heart of man, those things that God has prepared for those that love him. But he, here it is, has revealed them to us. So how does revelation come? By his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man. But the Holy Spirit would, would speak to us and give us revelation. So he's intelligent. I think about some of the things we did in the early days of my ministry. 
not just me, but church folk. And I know it had to grieve the Holy Spirit because it just didn't, it had no intelligence at all. Like running into walls. Huh? Stuff that we did in the name of the Lord. But, I mean, it's run over about 50 folks. Swinging your arm so wide. I remember <laughs> I was in a church service with Daniel Wilson in Brunswick, Georgia. And uh, he was up there, uh, Daniel, uh, and uh, th this old holiness preacher was up there with him. And evidently when the Holy Spirit would touch this man, he'd say, Am I telling you, Richard, you remember that, don't you? Well, he hit Daniel in the eye. <laughs> Bam! I'd like to say I was deep in everything, but I lost it. <laughs> Came right on out the spirit. <laughs> fell in the floor laughing. I just. <laughs> we were in Waycross, Georgia. And uh, running revival for Wiley Jackson. I was doing the drumming. Jared was doing the keyboard playing. Gwen and Angela uh, uh, Stewart now uh, were doing the praise service. And one of them was on this end of the church, and this one's on the other end of the church. And they was, you know, old. Now, you got to understand the old holiness church. Power from the Lord. Oh, you know, all that, you know. And so they, they were just jumping and shouting, and they took off and ran into each other. I'd like to say I was deep. <laughs> I lost it. It came right on out the spirit. <laughs> fell out laughing. <laughs> I told Gwen, I said, I bet you'll keep your eyes open from now on, won't you? <laughs> we in Hogan'sville, Georgia. Running a tent meeting. Tent wasn't big as nothing. Wasn't big as the bathroom in there. But it was a real small tent, wasn't it? Had more people on the outside than did on the inside, but they had a little, little bitty platform. Had Jared up there, had my Wurlitz. So I, I had a, we had a Wurlitz of keyboard at that time. And uh, he was sitting up there and they were doing that, doing that. And true story now, all I saw was Jared's feet. Because he fell off the stage. <laughs> I'd like to say I was a speed. <laughs> I'd like to say I was deep, but I lost it. I just fell out on the ground. <laughs> I couldn't stop laughing. We've seen some stuff in here. But when I think about it, I said, Lord, thank you for having mercy on us. We, did, we, we just didn't know no better, Lord. I'm sorry. I remember one Sunday I said, do something. You never did before. <laughs> Wish they hadn't done that. <laughs> we, we go right on. We move on. <laughs> we just wish they hadn't done that. Because some people did some things that. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Y'all got, got a memory. I got to just move right on, Chuck. Just move right on. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit's intelligent. I believe. I believe he's intelligent. Romans 8, 26, 27 says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities. That's weaknesses, not sicknesses. Uh, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself should be himself, because he's a person, maketh intercession for us. The Holy Spirit makes intercession for us. What does that mean? He stands in a gap for you. With groanings that cannot be uttered. And he searches the heart. He knows what is in the mind of the Spirit because he makes intercession for the saints according to what? So when the Holy Spirit prays, see, you don't know how to pray for certain things, and you allow him to pray through you, pray in the Spirit. And you get to pray things according to the will of God. You can't always go by what you see. Somebody comes up to you and needs help, and you pray, 
And and if you don't listen to the Holy Spirit, you end up helping the person. And what they needed was for you not to help them. It's kind of like the prodigal son. He was in the hog pen. Scripture says that he was hungry. He's about to eat what the pigs was eating. And nobody, read it, read it. Nobody gave him anything to eat. You know what the next verse said? And he came to himself and said, I'm going back home. See, sometimes people want you to do one thing and what they need is another. So now you need the Holy Spirit to direct you whether to help or not to help. Because sometimes helping is not helping. Sometimes helping is enabling. Hello? Hello? And, and I have to, I, I, my personality type, I have to practice no. Because my tendency is to just, you know, when we first started the church, man, we went to, that's when Shoney's was still open. Y'all remember that? That's been a long time ago, I know. That's how long it's been. But Danielle, she, you know, she got a heart like mine, so she would tell all the college kids, come on, go with us. Daddy going to pay for it. And so we walk in Shoney's on Sunday. On any given Sunday, we come in there with 10. 10 folks. And I'm picking up the tab. So my wife allowed the Holy Spirit to speak through her (laughs) and say, we ain't doing this. Because we'd eat good at Shoney's and then we didn't have no groceries for the rest of the week. And she said, no, we're not doing this. And I allowed the Holy Spirit to tell her, to tell me, we ain't doing this anymore. And so, and funny thing is, once I allowed people to pick up their own tab, I didn't have 10 people going to lunch with me anymore. (laughs) The crowd thinned out. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29 through 31 says, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good for the use of edifying. Now, see, if you put that on your refrigerator, that'll help. Because basically it's saying, if you ain't going to edify somebody, just keep your mouth shut. That's what the Chuck Thomas translation that verse is. That it may minister grace to the hearers. If you're not ministering grace to people, just be quiet. Or as mama would say, if you're not going to say nothing good, don't say nothing. Y'all remember that? And then he says in verse 30, what does he say? And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you're sealed to the day of redemption. See, the Holy Spirit is easily offended. And what offends him is, is, is when we do stuff and say stuff that we shouldn't do or say. And again, he's offended and he's grieved because he knows what that type of behavior or attitude is going to cost us. Just like you as a parent know, if your child keeps going down that road, It's going to end up this way. And you done preached your sermons and preached your sermons and reheated your sermon again and they still ain't changed direction. And so you have to do what the Lord does. Now this is the way the Lord does it just in case you didn't know. I found this out. That a part of grace is allowing you to run into the wall. I, I had to find this out. I thought grace, you know, is all good stuff. Well, this is he's, it's good that you run into that wall. 
I mean, the scripture says, David said it was good that I was afflicted. How in the world can it be good? I read that first and I wanted to throw the Bible down. It was good that I was afflicted. What? Then it goes on to say, that I might learn thy statutes. Only been to jail once in my life. Some of y'all hadn't been at all. You ain't missed nothing. You ain't, you ain't missed nothing. Uh, I, I, I went into 10th grade for DUI, you know, driving all my buddies around, drinking in, out in the country in South Georgia, blue lights. All my passengers were black. They all left like birds. <laughs> I don't, we was way out. I don't know how they got home. I, I know I was transported. I was driving my daddy's car. You know, I couldn't just leave the car out in the country. I'm driving his car. So I'm put in jail, and they put me in there with Otis. Otis, y'all remember Andy Griffith, right? I got a, I'm back, this is ponytail day. So I got a long ponytail. You know, I'm hippie looking. And, and, and I didn't want him to wake up and think I was his girlfriend or something, you know. <laughs> so I didn't sleep that night. I just sit on the other side of the room. So my daddy unintentionally did not come to jail that night. I know he got the phone call. They impounded his car. So he had to walk from his house to the jail to sign the bond to get me out and go get his car. He didn't talk to me for three days. And I finally just said, Daddy, let's, let's get this beaten over with because this Silas is killing me. And he said, okay, son. He said, uh, number one, you're just making a little piece of money on the weekends for spending money, but all that money going to belong to me because you, you ain't going to have the money to pay this fine when we go to court. I'm going to have to pay it, and you're going to pay me back every dime with that w money you were working on the weekend. So I said, number one, you're going to pay me back. Number two, they're probably going to suspend your license because you're a 10th grader, you, you know, and, so, and they did. They suspended my life for a year. And thirdly, he said, uh, he said, next time they pick you up, it's going to be for public drunk. <laughs> I said, why is that? He said, because you will never. <laughs> and to the day he died, never drive his car again. <laughs> Those type of lessons change you. Yes, I'm still telling you about it, and I'm, 67 years old. Those type of lessons, see, God has to put some speed bumps in your way. He has to put some, some walls for you to run into. And it's the grace of God doing it. He's saying, they ain't listening to me. They ain't listening to me. So I tell you what, they'll listen to this. How many of y'all had some grace moments like that in your life? Say, thank the Lord. Thank you, Lord. You love me enough to put that speed bump in my life. Yes, sir, I busted my nose, but I will never bust my nose again like that. Oh, hallelujah. Now, I, the reason I wanted to bring up the grieving part was this verse right here, Hosea 5, 15. I ran across this particular verse. How many people know there's a difference between the omnipresence of God and the manifest presence of God? Okay. Omnipresence means God's everywhere. Okay? To quote Rachel Hendricks, God's everywhere. Okay? But he's not manifest everywhere. Manifest is the tangible 
presence, the weighty, the, 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 the weight of the presence of God. You, you wonder why when sometimes you pray for people and they, they fall over. It's not because you pushed them over. It's because the, the natural met the supernatural. And the natural had to give. I, I remember, praise God, across the street that we, was, we had just come back from Brunswick. And there was an anointing that happened in Brunswick that came back with us for praying for people. And they were slain in the spirit. And even the people uh, in our church that said, I'm going to fall, they fell. <laughs> and, and, and we had a relative, actually of, of Cheryl uh, Rowland, that came to the service that day. And, and, and uh, she came in the back of the church and started walking up there in the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, she coming up here to test you. That's what he said. He said, she coming up here to test you. Well, I just, all I did was just barely just, and she went down. And her back was healed. She wanted to find out if we, and, and you know, people was going around town, somebody, we, I'm pushing buttons. I'm, I'm pushing the nerves on folks, making them fall down. I said, man, I ain't doing that. But if I had, if I knew how to do that, I got some folks I won't knock down. <laughs> Look at Hosea 5.15. I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense. And seek my face in their affliction. They will seek me early. Message translation says, I'm going to go back where I came from until they come to their senses. <laughs> when they finally hit rock bottom, maybe they'll come looking for me now. <laughs> that, that's, that's Holy Spirit right there. That's him. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Psalm 16, verse 11, Thou wilt show me the path of, of life in thy presence. We know this verse. In thy what? His fullness of what? Joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Joy is the, pres is the proof that the Holy Spirit is present. You, sometimes you can have a burden on you to pray, and you pray, and you pray, and you pray, and then sudden, all of a sudden, you get to laughing. Some of y'all that's really done some serious praying know what I'm talking about now. You mean, nah, nah, so cool to la, bah, nah, nah, and you go to crying, and you just ain't even, and all of a sudden, <laughs> see, that's him. See, he, he broke through. Oh, hallelujah. I'm almost finished. Just three more. Acts 5, 9 says, Then Peter said, Why did the two of you agree to test, this contemporary English, the Lord's spirit? This is Hanani uh, Ananias and Sapphira. The, the, the contemporary English uses the phrase to test. You could try to test the Holy Spirit. That's what that woman was doing. She was coming up to test, and she found out that the Holy Spirit was real. He could be resisted. Acts 7, 51. You stiff-necked and uncircumcised and hard in ears, do you always resist the Holy Ghost? As your fathers did, so do you. Your, 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 your ancestors were hard-headed, and so are you. Last one. 1 Corinthians 12, 7 through 11, and it talks about the the, the manifestation of the Spirit, and we'll use those in a, in a former, a, a, a latter lesson. But verse 11 says, But all these worketh that one and self same Spirit, dividing to every man severally, what is those last three words? He has a will. Holy Spirit has a will. And you and I need to know what that will is. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you for those that have been listening online. Praise God. Uh, we trust that you've been blessed by the message. If you've never made Jesus Lord of your life, just say this, Lord Jesus, I believe 
and I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I believe you came and you died for my sins and you rose again. You ascended back to heaven and you sent the presence of the Holy Spirit here in the earth realm. And so I receive you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed anything like that, praise God, in faith, I believe you got born again. Come and get in a, a, a great Bible church like this church right here and you can be taught the word of God. Amen. Praise God. We're going to receive our offering in just a moment. And we'll give you online a chance to, to go to the website, victorytabernacleministries.org. And there is a donate button on that. And you can give that way. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I promised Ricky that he could sing today. Amen. So come on up here, Ricky, and sing for us. This microphone right here. All right, young man. All right, praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise the Lord.